Thank you for joining this NHS focused Microsoft PPM webinar event, which is being presented by Wellington, a leading Microsoft Gold PPM partner in the UK. So my name's Baz Kinder and I'm a Microsoft PPM consultant at Wellington and a virtual team member within Microsoft. My role is primarily to educate organizations on how they can increase their project management maturity and improve the likelihood of project success. This session will provide an insight to the project management pains that affect a wide variety of organizations, including NHS trusts, and highlight how you can address those pains using Microsoft PPM. And moving on to the agenda, I'll be starting off with a brief introduction into Wellington project management. I'll give you an outline of the services that we can provide, and I'll also share with you a list of customer sites where we have actually deployed Microsoft PPM whether it be Microsoft Project Server, the on-premise variant, or whether it's Microsoft Project Online, which is also available in Office 365. I'll then provide a very brief rundown of the most common types of projects that are undertaken within NHS organizations, alongside the accompanying project management panes, uh, moving then on to uh, Microsoft PPM, and really in particular highlighting how it can help improve your approach to project management. I'll also be providing a brief demonstration today and I'll be discussing the options available around uh, running a trial uh, within your organization or, or implementation options as well. And at the end, I'll be sharing my contact details. So if you have any questions resulting from this session, feel free to get in touch. So Wellington, we offer a wide variety of services that are focused on helping organizations to increase their project and maturity. And through our consulting services, we help organizations to install project management process to increase their levels of project success. We also provide services around PMO setup and we offer maturity assessments as well. And once those organizations have um, the project management fundamentals in place, we then help them to implement Microsoft PPM. We're also an accredited APM training provider and we offer a wide variety of customized corporate training services. We also provide specialist project management focused recruitment services too. So what you can see on the screen right now is a diverse range of organizations that Wellington have worked with to deploy at Microsoft PPM. And uh, you'll notice on the slide as well that we have worked with a number of NHS trusts. And what I would say is that despite the diverse nature of these organizations, they all largely experience the same project management pains prior to deploying Microsoft PPM. Now, I am going to be talking about the solution in greater detail shortly, but just before discussing that in greater detail, let's take a quick step back and have a look at the types of projects that are typically undertaken within the NHS. So what you're seeing on the screen right now by no means uh, represents an exhaustive list of NHS project types. However, it does highlight the breadth of projects that are typically undertaken, ranging from the installation or decommissioning of lab and radiology equipment to estate projects which might range from new builds to refurbishments or general maintenance, to the deployment of solutions such as electronic patient records or voice and video conferencing solutions such as Skype for Business. So the question is, how do you currently manage these projects within your NHS trust? What we tend to find from experience is that most organizations tend to manage projects or portfolios of projects using nothing more than Excel or standalone instances of Microsoft Project. And this approach typically results in a number of issues. Often there's a general lack of project and resource visibility, there's very little standardization in approach, and a considerable amount of time is spent manually consolidating and validating data. So this leads us on to the question of why do projects fail? Well, to answer that, there are a number of reasons, and I'm going to cover those on the next slide. So why do projects fail? And, well, the reasons are quite obvious, and I'm not just saying that because it's displayed on the screen right now, but often projects are doomed to failure because they are vanity projects or they're pet projects. These are the projects that have been pushed forward for political reasons. They don't have an adequate business case in place that demonstrates uh, strategic alignment or return on investment. On occasion, the scope and the timeframes are completely unrealistic, and that's because discovery and planning hasn't been completed effectively. Lack of buy-in is another reason, often because the groups or the individuals that are going to be impacted just haven't been consulted with. They're not bought into the project. Once the projects are underway, was there adequate governance in place? Was the right information presented at the right time to enable go or no-go decisions? Who was accountable for the project? Was there a suitable senior responsible owner in place? To sum this up, the reason for project failure is often poor project management. 
And in case you're wondering whether or not the statements relate to a particular project, well, yes, it does. Uh, they relate to the National Programme for IT, which was a well-publicized failure. So the question is, how do organizations improve their project management maturity to help increase the likelihood of a project success? First and foremost, organizations need to have an understanding of project management. They need to have processes in place that are fit for purpose, supported by the appropriate functions. And we do see an increasing number of organizations with PMOs in place, either at the departmental level or at the organization level. And once those elements are in place, that's where Microsoft PPM can help organizations to improve their operational efficiency in managing projects and increase visibility into project performance and much, much more. And that brings me on to the topic of Microsoft PPM and how you can address your pains. Let me just outline for you at a very high level some of the major components. So what you'll notice on the screen right now is that Microsoft PPM offers a lot of functionality that caters for a diverse range of teams. From a top-down portfolio management perspective, what the solution will facilitate is the collection of project ideas. It will also guide you through the process of building your business cases, building draft schedules that are both cost and resource loaded. And then the system will help you to prioritize the project portfolios based on factors such as strategic alignment, return on investment, or anticipated benefits. And ultimately, what that's helping you to do is to eradicate the number of vanity projects or pet projects that get approval, because all the projects that are getting approved would be based upon objective data. And to help you improve your day-to-day -day approach to project management, Microsoft PPM allows you to standardize your approach to scheduling based upon templates. It gives you access to an enterprise resource pool, which enables you to consider, for example, demand versus capacity when you're assigning resources. Team members can also report time and collaborate a lot more effectively. And the solution also enables you to centralize your RAID logs and documentation. So rather than having things scattered across a variety of shared drives, it's all held centrally within the project site. And the solution also gives you access to a wide variety of centralized dashboards and reports, which are populated automatically. So manual reporting becomes a thing of the past, and that in itself provides a huge time saving. Now, I'm not suggesting that you would deploy all of this capability on day one, and typically the rollout of Microsoft PPM is phased. Small steps, quick wins towards benefits realization is the best approach to ensuring a successful implementation. And just before moving on to the solution demonstration itself, I just want to provide a very quick overview of the components that make up Microsoft PPM, and regardless of whether you're using Microsoft Project Server on-premise, or whether you're using Microsoft Project Online in the cloud as part of Office 365, it's the same. There are really two interfaces into the solution. You have the client application, otherwise known as Microsoft Project Professional, and this could be an application that you're already using, possibly in standalone format. So this is very much geared towards full-time project managers, uh, possibly even resource managers that need to put together, sorry, work breakdown structures and complete resource assignments, although you can also do that in the browser-based interface, which is referred to as Project Web App. And Project Web App is something that caters for a wide variety of users. It doesn't matter if you're a senior executive or a team member or a portfolio manager, you all log into exactly the same URL, but thanks to security trimming, we can control what individuals are able to see and do within the system. And no matter which application you use, as long as it's connected to Project Online or Project Server, you've got one version of the truth. So that brings me on to the solution demonstration. And this will be a very high level overview. So I'll be showing you how you would create a project, how you would go through selection process, how you would plan in greater detail. And last but not least, I'll show you some of the management information that is also available within both Project Online and Project Server. And now moving on to the solution demonstration of Microsoft Project Online. And uh, you just want to point out that this is very similar to Microsoft Project Server. There's very little difference other than the fact that Project Online is again in the cloud as part of Office 365 and Project Server is deployed on-premise using your own architecture. To reiterate, the solution demonstration that I'm about to provide is going to be pretty high level. If you would like to have a deep dive or delve into any of the functionality in greater detail, the best thing to do would be to reach out to me using the contact details I'll be displaying at the end. The screen that you're looking at right now has been branded. A generic NHS uh, theme has been applied. Of course, to apply your own themes uh, specific to your own trust is relatively straightforward. And I'm currently logged in as a super user, so I can see a lot of options available. There are a variety of tiles along the top that help me get started with Project Web App, and uh, I can also see a variety of tiles at the bottom that enable me to track my work. 
Had I logged in as somebody such as a team member, I might only see a fraction of the tiles visible. So if I wanted to start a brand new project, I would simply click on this Create Project link, and that will guide me through the process. If I'm new to Project Online and would like to learn a bit more, read some articles, I can also click through into that link as well. Along the bottom, the Track Your Work tiles enable me to go and view the Project Center, which displays centrally a list of all the projects in the portfolio that I have permission to view. If I, as a manager, want to go in and look at any task level updates that have been provided or any timesheet submissions that have been submitted or holiday requests that might be coming in, I can click through into approval and get visibility of those. I'm also informed here of the number of new tasks assigned to me. I can see that I've got timesheets that I need to submit. I'm also notified about the number of issues and risks assigned to me that I need to monitor. And uh, I can also see Tiles Air for Status report and reports generally. What I've got on the left-hand side of the screen is the Quick Launch menu, which is a static menu that helps me to navigate around Project Web App no matter where I am. So step number one, we need to create a brand new project. In order to do so, I'm going to click on this tile, and that will take me through to the uh, list of enterprise project types. So on this page, what I'm seeing now is a list of enterprise project types. Enterprise project types are effectively templates that help project managers to manage their projects. It also helps standardize the approach to managing projects, and it ensures that the governance process is also followed. So an EPT, in a nutshell, is effectively a wrapper that encapsulates a series of electronic forms that people need to complete at the various stages. Uh, it might be as part of a governance process. It can also invoke a workflow as well to guide you through that project lifecycle. It can also provide you with a schedule template for managing a particular type of project and provide you with a relevant project site template as well. And a project site I'll be coming back to a bit later. Out of the box, you don't get any templates. Uh, these are always bespoke to every organization. They are relatively straightforward to set up. But what I would do here is actually select the type of project I'm about to start and press the next button which is going to present for me the initial, what we would call a project detail page. And quite simply, a project detail page collects relevant information to the project. So I'm not going to delve into detail here. I'm just going to finish off and uh, cancel out of this. And from here, I'm going to go into the project center, which is where you would end up with a list of all of your projects. And within the project center, what I'm effectively seeing at the very top is a timeline view showing me some of the key initiatives that we currently have going on. I can see a today indicator and I can see some key milestones and to add projects to this particular view is relatively straightforward. You simply select the project and you click on this tile here to add a project or a task to that particular timeline view. However, the key element of this screen is actually a listing of all the projects that I've got permission to view. So currently I'm seeing a grouping of all the projects grouped by where they sit in their life cycle. I can see projects in the create phase, the select phase, the plan phase, and so on. And by the way, the naming convention of the phases and the stages, it's entirely bespoke as well. And it's linked uh, to the enterprise project types that I covered on the previous screen. So against each one of these projects, what I can see are various icons that inform me that there's a schedule associated, there are issues on the project, there are risks and associated documentation. I can also see a collection of traffic light KPIs being displayed which can either be set manually or you can have a system calculate those based upon comparisons to the original baseline. I can also see various columns of information being displayed such as start date, finish date, cost, but the information that you display and how you group is entirely up to you. So you get a number of global views out of the box, but you can also configure as many as you want to your heart's content based upon the data that you're collecting within your project online or your project server instance. And once you've selected the global views, you can also group and filter as you wish. Going back to this view, what I am going to do now is actually drill down into a project. So let me select the Biothermal Ear Warming System, uh, which is a project that I'll be using often, so get used to that name. So the page that I've landed on is Workflow Status, which shows me a graphical depiction of the lifecycle along the top. I can see the uh, phase that this project's been through, and I can see where I currently am. I'm currently in the Manage phase. I can also see if there's a branch point, which means that I'll have to submit my project through the workflow for approval in order to move on to the next phase, whatever that might be. And on the same page, I also see the sections that need to be completed for that particular stage. And down at the very bottom, I see a listing of all the workflow stages with ticks against the items that have been completed and an arrow showing me where I currently am. Going back to the top, I'm going to navigate now to the schedule, which again, I'm actually viewing within the browser. On the schedule page, what I'm seeing is the work breakdown structure grouped by task schedule at the moment. I can also see the high-level depiction there of the Gantt chart as well. I can also view the work breakdown structure 
here in the client application as well, which I'll be coming back to a bit later. For now, it's going to minimize that again. And uh, similarly to what we had in the project center, you're not restricted to this particular view. You can actually select from a number of other views. So rather than looking at the task schedule, I might want to look at uh, resource cost. And to do so, I click on the relevant view, and there I now see a depiction of my resource cost. And to reiterate, you're not limited to the views that you get out of the box. You can create as many additional bespoke views as you would like. So that's the schedule. Now imagine if you are going to be going through project selection, you need to complete certain information. Part one, you need a resource and cost loaded schedule. Uh, secondly, you need to complete a form similar to the one that I'm completing right now, which links into strategic impact. This is where the relevant parties would go through and identify to what extent this project, if it was to go ahead and deliver the benefits that it's meant to deliver, to what extent it would help the organization achieve that strategic objective. Would it help to a uh, low level or would it help to an extreme level? And these strategic drivers that you're seeing, they're all completely bespoke, as are the impact ratings as well. And of course, you would only complete this information if you were looking to do portfolio analysis within Microsoft Project Online or Microsoft Project Server. Closing out of this, however, what I am going to do is actually head over to the portfolio analysis module. So as part of a solution demonstration that I'm completing right now, I have skipped a few steps. So prior to this, I would have built up my portfolio. I would have determined which projects I want to bring into the mix. And I also would have selected which drivers I want to prioritize against. So on the screen, what you're seeing right now is very simply a list of all the projects in order of priority. For some organizations, this is the only analysis that they would complete. They simply want a list of all the projects in order of rank. Other organizations want to take this a step forward and analyze based upon cost as well, which is what we're going to have a look at now. So on this screen now, what I'm seeing is simply a listing of all the projects that I currently selected to bring into the analysis. I can see what the total cost of completing all of those projects would be. It would be just over 12 million pounds, but we would achieve maximum strategic value. Down here at the bottom, we've got a very handy report looking at strategic alignment. This basically shows us how important certain drivers are versus the proposed spend in this portfolio. So expanding into new marketing segments, it's very important, but we are underspending. You can also complete a number of what-if scenarios here as well. So what if I don't have 12 million pounds? What if I've only got maybe six million pounds? The system would then rejig and recalculate the portfolio and determine which projects it feels you should be running as opposed to the ones that it believes should be shelved. And what it's effectively going to be doing is trying to ensure you're getting the biggest bang for your buck based upon the amount of money you have available. So the cost metric I was using here was total cost, but you can also look at total benefit or return on investment. In a very similar vein, instead of analyzing cost, you can also analyze resources. So fair enough, we might have enough money to run 16 projects, but do we have enough people available to do the work? And the answer to that question is yes. In, in this particular scenario, yes, you do have enough people to complete these 16 projects. However, in the real world, it's not always the case. And uh, the system, again, will let you run through what-if scenarios. What if we were to hire more resources? Where should those resources be placed to ensure we can run a higher number of projects? The system will also show me where the deficit and resources are. So what skills uh, have we got a shortfall in? Where are the bottlenecks? Where do we need to focus our attention on in terms of recruitment? So that was project prioritization. Again, that was completed at a very high level. There is more to this. And if you would like to have a deep dive, please contact me using my contact details at the end. However, as we are talking about resource management, I am going to continue on that particular topic and head over to the resource center. And within the resource center itself, what I can now see is a listing of all of my resources. So within this enterprise resource pool, I could look at work resources, which are people or generic resources. It could even be rooms or equipment. I could also look at material resources and cost resources as well. To save a bit of time, what I've done is actually selected a few resources that I want to interrogate. I want to know what their availability looks like. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on capacity planning. And the very first report that I'm looking at is simply resource utilization. So along the top, I've got a number of parameters that I can fill out. I can determine the types of work units I want to uh, look at. I can also specify time scales. I can also include what we would call proposed bookings, which are effectively soft bookings. It's not committed work. It might happen and it lets you perform what if analysis. What if all the proposed work was to go ahead? Would we exceed our resource capacity? So on the report itself, what I'm seeing is a capacity line along the top that tells me 
combined collectively the entire team could complete 216 hours of work in a day. The bars at the bottom represent the amount of work that people have actually been assigned and all of this white space in between is free time where we have resource capacity that could be utilized. This information is also available in table format on the bottom and you could export that out into Excel to run your own analysis if you want to. Aside from that view, you've also got access to other views and uh, the only other one that I'm going to show you right now is simply remaining availability, which is a very nice view. Where you've got bars going up, people have got availability. Where the bars are going down, people are overutilized and probably looking quite stressed. I can zoom in to a little extent. I can also choose to change the time scale from uh, days into perhaps weeks. And if I don't want to look at weeks, I could look at uh, months or quarters or even years. So that was a very quick look at uh, resource management within Project Web App, within Project Online. What I'll do quickly is actually switch over to Project Professional. And I'm not going to be showing you how you would assign resources in the first place based upon uh, resource availability in the Enterprise Resource Pool. But what I would like to show you is simply the Team Planner view, which is one of my favorite views, it has to be said. And in the Team Planner view, what I'm effectively seeing is a list of all of my resources here on the left-hand side. The ones that are colored in red are red because they're simply over allocated. But in this calendar view, what I can see is a listing of all the tasks that have been scheduled in, and there's a lot of red bracketing going on, and that indicates over allocation as well. And if I was just to roll over these tasks very quickly, you can see that I get some relevant information. I can also double click into that to bring up the task information window. And importantly, I can see that this uh, resource has a clash because there's another project going on at the same time. And this ghosted out project, this grayed out area, is showing me a, a separate project that is looking to use the same resource at the same time. But because I have this visibility, I can go and speak to the other project manager to determine what we can actually do. And the other beauty of the team plan of view is the fact that you can actually reschedule or reallocate work simply by clicking and dragging. And when I've moved that task out, you notice that other things have moved out as well. Of course, if I had task level constraints in place, I wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, heading back now to Project Web App. Now that we're back in Project Web App, what I'm going to show you is the view that an end user would have showing them all the work that they've been assigned. And in order to do so, I'll actually go into the timesheet. And within the timesheet that I'm looking at right now, what I can actually see is a listing of what we would call administrative line items. These are BAU items, non-project items that people might want to report their time against. But at the bottom, I'm seeing a listing of projects and specifically which tasks I've been assigned to work on. And here I can also see the planned number of hours for me on a given day. And to put in my actuals, I would simply go into the cell above and type in the number of hours I've spent on that particular task. I can also drill down into that particular item. So having drilled down into the task, what I can see along the top are some general details. I can see some task properties such as start date, finish date and remaining work. I've got the power here as an end user to go in and um, amend these dates or to amend the amount of remaining work. Of course, this would have to go back to the project manager for the project manager to approve before it then reflects on my timesheet. But this certainly demonstrates how a team member could collaborate with the uh, project manager. Scrolling down, you can also see recent task changes of which we have none for this particular assignment. You'd also be able to see associated attachments. Are there any risks or issues on this project? Again, in this example, we have none. Importantly, you can also see contact information, so who's the project manager and who specifically is the approval manager for this specific task. You can also see who's been assigned to the task to work on it, so are you doing this in isolation or are you working on this as part of a team? And talking of teams, you also see a breakdown of the entire project team as well. Uh, one of my favorite areas on this screen is related assignments. So here I can see the tasks that are scheduled to finish before this task can start. And uh, if there were any tasks dependent upon me finishing on time, I'd be able to see that as well. And importantly, you can also see who the individuals are working on their specific tasks. I've also got a notes window here, which allows me to type notes in against that task. And this note would then be visible to anyone that's working on it, whether it's uh, another team member, whether it's the project manager. And this note would be visible here in the browser, but also within Project Professional itself. Cancelling out of this now, I'm going to head back to the project center in order to navigate myself to a project site. In order to do that, I'll go back to my favorite project, which is the biothermal ear warming system, and I'll click on these ellipses and go to the project site. Here we can see that this is the project site for the biothermal ear warming system, 
and along the top you've got a very useful project summary web part. So this not only shows me a depiction of the timeline for the project, it also gives me uh, factual information such as the number of late tasks and the number of upcoming tasks as well. Clicking into late tasks, what I'm effectively going to see is a work breakdown structure that contains all of the tasks that are overdue. It actually gives me the due dates, and if we had any resource assignments in place, you would also see those here as well. But going back to the uh, main page, something else you see on the project site is a collection of a project document. So we see a few documents being listed down here. And for those of you that are already familiar with SharePoint, you'll be pleased to hear that the project sites themselves, as well as Project Online and Project Server, they're actually built on SharePoint. So when you think of functionality like document content types or document metadata, which would facilitate enterprise-wide search, all of our functionality is available here as well. And scrolling down, you can also see risks and issues being displayed. And to give you a very quick insight into what the forms look like, I click on the edit item. You can see that it's a pretty straightforward SharePoint list that's collecting information such as title, owner, assigned to, status, categorization, probability score, impact score. And what I'm showing you right now is effectively out of the box. So if you wanted to tailor this, if you wanted to customize it and add some additional fields in, even if you wanted to modify the way in which certain information is collected, such as probability rather than being percentage, uh, if it should perhaps be a score of 1 to 3 or 1 to 5, those types of changes can be made quite easily. Having just had a very quick look at the project site, what I'm going to move on to now is reporting. And I'll start by showing you the recently launched Office 365 Project Portfolio Dashboard. And what you can see on this initial overview dashboard is uh, a series of uh, reports. Uh, the first one here is showing me project cost versus baseline cost, and you'll notice that it's interactive. And I can also see a pie chart here depicting spend by different types of projects. And on the bottom, I can see a breakdown of all the projects grouped by departments. And for each one, I can see various KPIs being displayed against schedule, work, and cost. It's a lot of green ticks, which is what we like to see. Uh, but we also see variance as well. So what kind of variance exists in terms of schedule, work, or cost? So this shows me very quickly which projects I need to focus on and drill down into. However, rather than going into that one, I am going to find my favorite project again, which was the Biothermal Ear Warming System. And when I click into that, what I'm going to see is a report that's very specific to that particular project. Along the top, I can see project summary, so I see the number of slipping tasks. I see cost overruns, I see work overruns as well. And on the other side of the screen, I see the top resources with task discrepancies. I can also see this information represented in these tabs along the bottom. Aside from this, I've also got access to an executive summary dashboard which is incredibly informative, and again, this is out of the box. And many of these items are hyperlinks that allow me to further drill down into the detail. Aside from this, I'm going to move on to one other dashboard, which is resource-related. And on here, I can see the top resources by demand for 2016, and I can also see the top resources with issues. But the standout feature for me on this particular report has to be the availability resource heat map. In terms of reporting, there are other reporting options available, especially if you're using Office 365 and if you have access to Power BI. However, to conclude report, I'd also like to show you some of the reports you get out of the client application. So if I head back over to Project Professional, you'll see under the reporting tab that we have access to a number of dashboards, some of which are resource-specific, others that are related to cost or general in-progress elements. And if I now go for the cost overview, what you first of all see is a very good looking dashboard, uh, also very informative, but importantly, it's also interactive. And if I want to extend this report, I can do so very easily by simply clicking on any one of the elements and bringing up a field list, very similarly to what you would do within Excel. Aside from the out of the box reports here, you can also go in and create your own custom reports and you can base them on some of the out of the box templates should you wish to do so. So that really does conclude the uh, solution demonstration. Again, that was at a very high level. If you would like to have a deep dive, then please get in touch with me using my contact details, which will be coming up shortly. Moving on now to trial and implementation options. So if you would like to see more of Project Online or Microsoft Project Server, and you would like to arrange for a bespoke demonstration, whether that's going to be delivered remotely or face-to-face, -face, then please get in touch, and I will be sharing my contact details shortly. If you would like to discuss implementation options in greater detail and like to understand how it could benefit your organization or your department, we can also provide on-site discovery days. 
If you would like to be hands-on and test drive project online, we can provide either 30-day or 90-day trial environments. And for transparency, the 90-day trial environments tend to be used in conjunction with a formalized proof of concept. If you've already decided that you would like to implement Microsoft PPM and you want to discuss what a implementation might look like within your organization, then please get in touch with me using the contact details that will be coming up at the end. However, if you're not quite at the point whereby you're ready to implement Microsoft PPM, but you would like to start building up a business case, then I would very highly recommend that you go to Microsoft.co.uk forward slash project and download the Forrester report titled The Total Economic Impact of Microsoft Office 365 PPM. And that brings us on to the final slide. So my contact details are displayed. If you have any questions at all, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. And if you would like further insight into Microsoft PPM, then please visit Microsoft.co.uk forward slash project, which contains a wealth of information. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for viewing this video.